In this video, we are going to discuss coordinate functions on Rn and on manifolds more generally. So first, what is a manifold? So a smooth n-manifold, m, is a subset of some larger Euclidean space Rk, where for all x in m, there are uh, so there's a triple, u, phi, and v. Usually we drop um, v from the notation called a coordinate chart. And the point of this u, phi, and v is basically it tells us it's a precise way of saying that m is locally very boring, though globally it could be interesting. So u is an open set in R k containing x. x. v is an open set in R k. And phi is a smooth, so, so it's an infinitely differentiable. Infin, let me spell this correctly. Infinitely differentiable function, um, which is also a bijection. So it's not just function, it's a bijection with an infinitely differentiable inverse. And phi sends, so phi sends um, u to rk. And in particular, phi sends u to v. And even more specifically, phi of the intersection of u and m is the intersection between v and the sort of rn hidden inside rk by setting the final k minus n coordinates all equal to zero. So um, if, if any map in general satisfies uh, these two properties, um, or these three properties, I guess, infinitely differentiable and a bijection with an infinitely differentiable inverse, um, then we say V like this is a diffeomorphism. diffeomorphism. So that's a word we could use more generally. So what's the point of this? Let's do an example. So um, if I take, uh, let's see, S2, which is all pairs x, y, z in R3, such that uh, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to 1. And I were to, so let's draw this. So here I'm just basically considering this shell, right? I'm not considering the interior, just sort of the exterior shell. Now let's let u be some blob that intersects, so another ball maybe that intersects um, S2. So here's, here's my u and x is some point in here. So then uh, phi is some map and it's a bijection and infinitely differentiable with infinitely differentiable inverse. So it's gotta be pretty nice. Let's say it sends um, u to some blob v over here in R3, just living somewhere in R3. And I'll just keep track of where it sends um, x. So this is this yellow is my point x. Then uh, what this final condition here is saying is that this intersection, so this semicircle, um, if I you know if I pick u to be nice enough, I'll, maybe u, sorry not semicircle, the disk, like the interior of a disk, um, maybe u intersects m in the interior of a disk, gets sent to the interior of this disk in R3. So where so and um, what this condition means is I can put coordinates on the image so that this this green um, green disk is literally just living in this same x y plane. So in the z equals zero plane. Um, there are more examples. So there's a pretty uh, helpful definition because it allows us to study spaces like S two, um, which sort of globally are complicated, but locally we can think about them using just these small coordinate charts. So some examples 
that we'll think about, um, S1. So this is just the same thing as S2, but with one fewer dimension. Um, another fun example is T2, which is S1 cross S1. So pairs of points where one is in one circle and the other is in another circle. We often think of, so this is called a torus. We often think of the torus as embedded in R3 uh, as the surface of revolution of a circle. So you take this circle maybe in the XZ plane and you revolve it around the Z axis. You can see there's a circle times a circle, right? So each of these is a circle and then there's a circle of circles. Um, and the nice thing about a product like this is that you can basically take whatever coordinate charts you chose for S1 and then double them, and then those now become coordinate charts for um, the product. And there's all sorts of other examples that we'll run across during class. Um, so what we'd like to do is be able to do calculus. And so for calculus, on these manifolds, Uh, we're going to need coordinates. Oh, and I forgot to say the most um, sort of important example is Rn is a manifold. So you only need one chart. It's just all of Rn and the identity. So in this case, K is just equal to N itself. Um, right, so for calculus on manifolds, we're going to need coordinates. And so essentially, the idea is that um, every coordinate chart is really just equivalent to some set of um, some set of k functions, and the first n of those give us coordinates on our manifold. So if I have um, a coordinate chart, sorry about this. Uh, A coordinate chart um, u phi gives me coordinates on u. So it might not give me coordinates on the whole thing, right? I, you know, clearly S2 is not R2, but it will give me coordinates on this small patch here. And that's because I can think of phi as this k tuple of functions. And so, um, so really, I mean, I don't really care about uh, about u. What I really care about is u intersect m. So then, the first uh, n functions in phi give me there are too many hoops on that m. Give me coordinates on u intersect m. So, um, so for example, in this case, let me draw the coordinates. So um, here I have some map, and um, let's maybe assume that phi sends the yellow point x to the origin. So I'm going to move. I'm going to move this axis um, to be right at the origin. So what I'm saying is that there's got to be some um, basically, if I take the the inverse of the coordinate um, Cartesian coordinate system on this green patch, I get some sort of coordinate system. Maybe it's like wiggly, but it's still something on um, on my manifold. And so, this is secretly saying that I can write phi as sort of three coordinates, and phi is going to send this line that I've labeled phi inverse of x to just the line, the x-axis, because the coordinates along there will be, um, you know, x zero zero. And you know, there are more types of coordinates. So um, another example. Uh, so examples of coordinate functions. Um, so obviously there's the regular Cartesian coordinates. On Euclidean space, um, you may have seen polar coordinates. 
on R2, but you can't include the origin. So um, what this means is you cannot contain the origin. Otherwise, um, these polar coordinates aren't really well defined. Uh, another example is on S1. You can choose angular coordinates. So if I pick, um, if I have my S1 and I have, I want to define coordinates on, say, some open set um, that doesn't contain the origin, or sorry, that doesn't contain um, the point one zero, I can define, I can pick sort of some number of times to wrap around from the positive x-axis to the point to the, the vector pointing from zero, zero to the point that I'm interested in and compute this angle here. And this can be my coordinate function, right? Because now I, so here phi is just phi one of x. Um, and if I didn't, so if my, so then, you know, right, so here would be given by that angle. And say, say I, you know, I did um, choose my open set U to contain the point um, one zero, that still doesn't really matter. I could just pick, you know, any other point, like maybe I'll pick this point and just say, okay, my coordinate function is just going to measure the angle between like literally this line, which I just randomly pick and, um, and the ray determined by my point. So as long as I can choose some sort of like basis, uh, ray, then I can define a coordinate function on S2. Uh, 